I'm Major Adam Cole, uh, Commander of 1st Battalion, 157th Infantry. Uh, down here in Alamosa uh, with John. Uh, we just uh, went through a funeral celebrating the life of his grandmother. Uh, she served in World War II uh, as part of the Women's Army Corps. Uh, and John, uh, what we really want to do is just learn a little bit about her experiences. Um, I understand she had an interesting way of entering into the service, uh, so yes. if you could tell us a little about that. Uh, she, you know, of course, after Pearl Harbor, she wanted to serve, and she was too young. And finally, she came up with the idea that when she was 16, that she could. She told him that she was born in 1923 instead of 1927, that she could get in. So she joined the WAX, you know, underage at age 16, and went through service and did her first tour in Italy in the, you know, Anzio campaign under General Mark Clark. And then after that campaign was completed, she'd sit to Austria and she was supposed to be, you know, uh, kind of, I don't know, discharged from the military and stuff. And then they talked her into re-enlistment. And then her second tour went with Pan's 3rd Army Division. And she was with the 157th as part of their, um, well, her my grandfather was, you know, but they met there at Dachau. They were part of liberation at Dachau. And she worked for the re-education services with the females that they brought through the trenches and stuff to you know, make the German people aware of the atrocities their government had committed. And, and my grandfather, since he was born in Germany, but raised in New York, immigrated when he was three, he could speak German well, and he was interviewing prisoners and survivors. And it was a very, it was a very trying time for him too, because so many of them, you know, were still close, many of them, even though I would liberate, they didn't survive, they died within the days after. They couldn't receive new, you know, if they couldn't receive nutrition, they couldn't even eat anything but porridge. So it was, it was very important to rapidly get as much of their details, of their many details of experience and stuff on documented. And so he, he was part of that process. Yeah. Was there anything that really struck out or stuck out to them about Dachau? Uh, that's, that's one of the things that our unit, uh, we hold highly esteemed in our heritage, was the liberation of Dachau. Uh, and their experiences, I'm, I'm sure, were... Their biggest spirit is the disbelief that anyone could do this to another group of people. And to them, you know, being from America, they, and seeing the guards that they'd interned at the camp and the local population they were forcing through, the only thing they, they didn't see really, they all sounded the same they spoke. They couldn't, they couldn't understand the difference between the two groups or why this group did this to them because they didn't look that terribly different. And so they were just terribly troubled by it all and never got used to it even to the end of their lives, they just never got used to the horrors that they saw there. Absolutely. Uh, so John, uh, thank you again. It's, it's an amazing story. Uh, she led an amazing life, uh, was an amazing person. Uh, and uh, it, it, I, the, the tragedy today is that I never got to know her while she was still here. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, and thank you for everything. Well, I thank the military for all their support and all the soldiers that came to her, her funeral. Thank you. This is my grandmother's pride and joy. This is her lily pond. Right now the ice just came off it a couple days ago and it's, it's early March, but this thing is just covered in pink, red, white, and yellow water lilies. And she loved her pond working in there, um, raising irises around it and raising tomatoes around it. She was really an outdoor person, loved her water lilies. And our ranch, you can see, they just love the outdoors and the flat open spaces. Bye.